The following are case studies presenting pictures of the posterior glenoid labrum and its abnormalities. In our anatomical review, we have the posterior surface of the humeral head with articular hyaline cartilage in blue. The proximal origin of the infraspinatus tendon here in yellow with a more laterally light blue landmark of the greater tuberosity which will act as insertion of the infraspinatus tendon. Highlighted here in green is the spine of the scapula with a red posterior acromion process which serves as a great palpation point to begin the examination of the infraspinatus tendon. Highlighted here in purple is the posterior bony glenoid of the scapula and the structure here in white represents the posterior glenoid labrum which is only clearly identified by ultrasound at its approximate 9 o'clock position. Overlying these structures is the large infraspinatus muscle and tendon followed by the teres minor resting just inferior to the infraspinatus tendon. Corresponding ultrasound image here of the posterior glenoid labrum. We have highlighted here the bony glenoid of the scapula followed by a highlighted image of the bony posterior humerus with a dark rim over the bone representing the posterior articular hyaline cartilage. Highlighted here would be the infraspinatus muscle belly which is seen obliquely in this slice so that we can have a clear image of the posterior glenoid labrum here highlighted as a hyperechoic triangle. Internal and external rotations are great dynamic maneuvers for the posterior glenoid labrum as the greater tuberosity is brought posteriorly towards the bony glenoid the posterior glenoid labrum is bought, brought under tremendous stress forcing a blunting of the posterior glenoid labrum. Seen here is a disruption of the normally homogeneous pattern of the posterior glenoid labrum. On external rotation this becomes even more noticeable as the tissue interfaces are brought together and then relaxed under this dynamic stress maneuver. On internal rotation we may also see loose bodies deep within the joint. This image of an external rotation reveals a false joint effusion, what looks like a large hypoechoic structure protruding from the posterior joint surface is actually just contracted muscle belly which contains a large amount of water as well as a high incidence of anisotropic artifact due to the angle of tendon insertion. Special care should be used when identifying a posterior joint effusion to overlay the infraspinatus tendon over the joint, creating an interface for fluid to rest that is not hypoechoic. By bringing this hyperechoic interface over the joint space, it is easy to identify joint effusions.